Hey YouTube and Soda Pop fans, we're gonna go over uh, Super Dungeon Explorers Kickstarter Wave 2 unboxing. Stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna go over some of the contests. We'll start with smaller ones and then work our way up to the bigger stuff. Um, we'll go over the Twilight Night first. Uh, for those who don't know, Twilight Night is a crossover from Kingdom Deaths game. It's pretty cool. A lot of uh, crazy, maddening things in that game. Let's go to the Twilight Night card. She's fairly strong. Won't last too long because you guys should just get the model and play with it. Grab the model next. Really good model. Pre-assembled as always now. Uh, all the stuff from uh, Soda Pop Miniatures for Super Dungeon Explorer comes pre-assembled. Um, so you can just take it out of the box and start playing with the game. Next we'll go over the Tabby Book Mage. Here's your card. See she's a supportive debuffer. Back to the ice. And so yeah, go back to the next stuff. Okay, next we're gonna go over the bag of slime. Which is a new new thing to the arcade mode for Super Dungeon Explorer is the critters and slimes are pretty pretty rad in general. Make sure you get twelve slimes in the bag of slime and they are translucent and colored, so they are pretty rad. Let's see if we can get any of the details on there. There you go. Be able to see the eyes on this right darker one. That's a little better with the light. So you can paint them up pretty much like their pictures. And they have both the standard game cards and the arcade mode game cards. And both they are insignificant, meaning that you don't get any points to your loot if you destroy them in the game. So yeah, they're, they're pretty rad. I might want to get more of those. All right. Now we'll take a look at, at the Goro and the Deep Root Wolf Rider hero. So let's go with the Wolf Rider first. So it's a large model. She's on a wolf, as the name suggests, obviously. focused for you. Let's take a look at the card. She's speed 8, so she's pretty fast. Sure foot, can't get knocked down. Harass is pretty good, knock down and slow. Pounce, Glimmerberry Juice. Pretty good. Let's check out our optional mini boss Goro. And he comes with the six Geary's. So we got the Explorer Boss Bond card. Which is the same thing on both sides for him. Showing what he does during everything. Uh, that comes with a pack of Explore cards, which are part of the arcade mode. They have you flip these when you go into a new room. They're pretty good. They spawn the creeps, which are the Geary, basically, and traps and other such things if you're playing with those. And we'll check out the cards, too. So we got the normal card. It's pretty strong. Pretty strong. We got the arcade mode card. 
kind of automates the boss for everyone. And we got all his uh, associated loot if you use him in the game. It's all pretty good. This pack comes with a lot of stuff. Really changes the game up. There's the Geary. And it's insignificant for the normal game. And the Geary for the arcade mode. Alright guys, on to the next one. Alright, now we're going to check out the Warband for Emerald Valley. And Warbands are for uh, not only expansion to the game, adding mini bosses and stuff like that. Um, it also is for the Super Dungeon Explorer Arena mode. And what Arena is, is you pick a hero and a mini boss and two spawning vessels that work with each other. And you make a little army, a little warband if you will. And uh, you fight against an opponent that has the same. It's a pretty cool variant. You guys should try it out if you haven't already. All the rules are... There should be a re uh, quick arena rules online. Um, as well as the Forgotten Kings rule books. So let's check out the cards. Everything comes in plastic bags or Ziploc bags or some kind. I just had them out because I don't have a tripod. Make it easier for you guys. So we got the Silver Cavalier, which is the hero. We have the Glimmerwing mini boss. For the arcade mode. The fungal growth, which is their spawning points. Okashroom or Oko Shroom, which is the elite monster. We have the Kino Shrooms. The Truffle Pig. Eh, truffle Pig. And then there are arcade equivalents. Fungal Growth. The Fungus Brigade, which are both of those, of the Oko Shrooms and the Kino Shrooms. Same with the Pig Patrol of the two Truffle Pigs. And the shimmering robes from the Glimmer Wing. Let's check out some of the models. Check out the Silver Cavalier. Oops. As always, chibi and very detailed. So you can go a lot with the painting on these. Let's check out the Oko Shroom. He's a big guy with uh, what seems to be like maces on his tail or maces on his belt. Check out the, another one, another Oko Shroom, because there's two of them. There's the Fairy Dragon with the Kino Shroom on him. But a the fairy dragon, mini boss. Pretty good. I like the dragons in this game. They're very characterful. Here's one of the spawn points. Never mistake the spawn point. There's their mushrooms all over it. Here's one of the Kino shrooms. get closer so you see the swirls in their cheek because they are there it's not just part of the art there it is and then the truffle pig and you get a handful of those as well Four truffle pigs. It's like 
six, seven, eight. Eighteen has two Okos and the Silver Cavalier along with the Fairy Dragon, of course. Alright. On to the next one. Alright guys, the next Warband we're going to check out is the Stilt Town Zombies. And the Stilt Town Zombies are pretty cool. They have a lot of voodoo zombie-esque themes to it. This one comes with Mr. Bitey, which is one of the pets. You know, picture there of him. I'll show you the card model in here in a second. As well as the hero, Mary Claude. And if you uh, follow Super Dungeon or Soda Pop Miniatures in general, you know she's one of the one of the regular cosplayers that uh, cosplay with them when they go to conventions and stuff. She's a prof professional model. She'll be at Gen Con this weekend, Gen Con 2015. So check it out, guys. Uh, let's we'll start with the cards again. Ooh, Mr. Bitey, little pet card comes in there comes in the treasure uh, loop the loop cards you get pets in those those pets help out um, with your hero adding a little bit more damage a little bit more support we got survivor Mary Claude with her rolling pin and her frying pan weapons we got the gruesome George Mini boss. Electrical attacks. The Grabby House. Which is a good name for it. We'll show you the model in a minute though. Why it's called Grabby House. We have the Shamble Priest, which is the Witch Elite. He does we do type attacks. Prowler, which is the fast zombie, as we've grown accustomed to runner zombies. We got Pudge, and he's the big guy. And then of course we got all the Swampies, which are the normal dudes. They all have Grabby and Mob. Show what Grabby does. Space can't move if you're next to it. Jason Square and Mob if you uh, play Kobolds you know what Mob does it adds a blue dice to your rolls in uh, non-arcade mode of course we got the arcade equivalents Gruesome George Gravity Houses and then we got the Grave Robbers which is the Shamble Priest with the Prowlers as his minions and then we got the Rotters which are the which is Pudge with Swampies as his minions and there's the Mr. Bitey treasure card and the Brain Souffle. Delicious. Gives you Berserk. Let me go check out the models. Sorry about the sniffling, guys. I have a little cold. Got Mary Claude with her frying pan and her uh, rolling pin there. Got the Voodoo Priest guy. Voodoo Priest always with top hats always remind me of Dr. Siller. Here's Mr. Bitey, the pets. There's an action in the game that allows you to summon pets when you get them as a treasure. It's always useful to get a pet. Here's Gruesome George. Here's Pudge. Big ol' fat zombie. There is the runner guy. Prowler. Looks like he's jumping over a fence or something. We got the old Swampies. I gotta admit. Let's see if we can get it focus. So we can explain it. Here we go. 
I understand why the eyes are like that. For the art, the eyes would be like bulgy. And you make them while your eyes are rolling back because you see little two dots in his eyes. But from far away, if you don't see those dots, very uh, Nosferatu uh, creepy esque. You can go a completely different direction with it. Instead of com uh, comical, you can go super scary with it. I like it a lot. And of course, the Grabby House. And the reason it's called a Grabby House because it's a little house. And the door, let's see if we can get it focused. It's just full of hands. Because they'll grab you. It'll grab you. I really like the spawning vessels. On a bigger scale, they'd make really uh, interesting and fantastic terrain for some games. You get a sermon of more of them, obviously. You get another pudge. So you get eight uh, swampies. Or uh, six swampies, two prowlers. Here we go. Two prowlers, two pudges, six six swampies, a Mr. Bitey, a brain souffle, and everything obviously on the back of the box. I'll tell you what you get. And one more warband, guys. And then we'll go over the uh, tile set. Okay guys, the last warband the Kickstarter Wave 2 came with was the Claws of the Worm. And the Claws of the Worm are the Kobold. It's the Kobold themed night set. I'm gonna start with the cards. We have the Dragon Blade. He likes fighting dragons and kobolds and dragon spawns with his dragon spite. Bottled Dragon Breath is his potion. We have the Worm Call Templar, which is the Kobold hero variant of the mini boss of Sir Shark Claw. The Sir Shark Claw's mini boss card. Claw Shrines, which are their spawners. We got the Black Claw Assassin. The Claw Trainer, which helps out the Drake Hounds. And of course their arcade equivalent. We got the Sharp Sharp Claw. Claw Shrines. Black Claws, which are the Assassins. It's a little, du little duo. A little Link duo. And the Blood Trackers, which are the Claw Trainers as the Elites and the Drake Hounds as the Minions. And the Drake Kebab Charger card for sure. Shark Claw. Lance 8 and Hex. Pretty good. So we'll check out the miniatures. We got the Dragon Blade. Fully decked out armored kobold warrior. Flowing cape. We have one of the Black Claw Assassins. And the dynamic entry pose of jumping down to stab you. We have the Sir Snapjaw model with a bent lance, but that's okay guys. Um, with resin and plastic models, you don't ever have to really worry about them being bent. It just naturally happens because of heat or just if the models rustle in a certain way. They bend back. Um, the easiest way to do that is to dip that in hot water. Um, and as you wait it in that hot water, it's just about boiling like hot tea water basically. Um, as you wait, you can see you'll see it bend back in place to where it was where it wants to be so it'll be straight um, And then you just put in cold water so it solidifies that way and that hardens the molecule so that it doesn't rebend um, 
but yeah, like stuff like that. If you have a lot of models with a lot of easily bent objects, um, stuff like I wouldn't leave that in the, in the heat. Uh, say like the trunk of your car during the summer, or in your car. The trunk trunks are usually okay. They're they usually end up being cooler than the car themselves, but still better safe than sorry. Cause you don't want to put a nice paint job on there and then um, have it bend and you have to put it in hot water and cold water just to get it to re bend. But yeah, so you never have to worry about that. It's a really good model, it's very big. I would say this would probably be the biggest model. that I can think of, besides say, uh, Starfire being probably as big in Rex from the original set. He sticks out fairly far from the base. Still a really cool model. Can't wait to use him as my hero for the Warbands. Got the Spawner Vessel, which are the Claw Shrines. It's pretty cool. Again, these would make wicked terrain. They were like three times bigger. You got the Drake Hounds. The Taskmaster. The Comical Goggles. And his whip as well. Fantastic. I think that's it. We went over, yeah, we went over the assassin, the drill counts, the spawning vessels. Yeah. So yeah, we'll come back and do the uh, one of the tile, one of the two available tile sets. I only got one of them. Uh, we'll be going over the Drake one. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Last but certainly not least is the Von Drack Ghost House tile set. Not only does it come with the six tile, six double-sided tiles, it comes with the creeps, which are these rattle bones, if you remember from the original Von Drac Manor, and their associated cards, so you get everything you need for that tile set. Um, it comes in a really big, and I think very nice uh, packaging. You can see everything as you, as you want. And uh, we'll get right to it. Of course, you got the, the rattle bones. We won't take those out. Basically, you get to see them. You get 12 of those guys. So the 12 creeps. Here, their their associated cards and treasures and whatnot. Rattle bones the, for the classic version. Rattle bones for the arcade. Then you got the uh, effects of the tiles themselves, what the little symbols and stuff mean on this specific tile set. So that's difficult terrain, there's chasms, there's structures you can't walk through, the goddess shrine, which helps you out, gives you blessings, um, sentinel gives you more defense, champion gives you more attack, brambles hurt you, and give you the poison modifier. Spawn locations where spawning vessels go. Fresh graves are, is difficult terrain where rattlebones spawn from. And secret passages are ways of bypassing certain areas. So let's get to get to look at the tiles themselves. So that to the side. Try to open this with one hand. Alright. So let's see. Alright. So this is the first one. I like the dark purples and greens and the fires. Like I said, they are double-sided, so you get to basically craft your own adventure there. You see structures and difficult terrain and brambles. There's 
some there's some goddess chamber there's some goddess statues spawn vessel uh, statue can't walk through um, walls obviously or chasms everything's de uh, defined for you so there's no guessing anymore uh, Yeah, inside of the castle and the castle looks like the castle grounds for like the garden or whatnot. A little, little storeroom. Nice hallway. Some bedrooms. Some more outside the castle grounds. Or manor grounds, I should say. dining room area, very open area for fights, uh, really big melee uh, champion shrines, it looks like a pumpkin patch, really cool, be cool with some of the Halloween during Halloween. Secret passage. Like the glowy earth, the hollow graves. effects it can get out on these are pretty cool. And you can use these for arcade if you want to. Uh, right now they have one rollout map they use for arcade, um, which you can use as well. It's all up to the whoever, whoever plays. Alright guys, that's it for this. Um, again, sorry for the sniffling, I have a little cold check out their stuff this is most of the stuff they're going to have for release at gen con 2015 uh which is pretty much uh in the upcoming week or so uh check it out there pick up some stuff have a lot of fun with it there's a lot of things you can do with this game it's really fun that's your friends your family uh and until next time guys